Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, April 10th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at tonight's stories. Tonight, a National Guard captain discriminates against InfoWars coverage of a dirty bomb drill. And veterans launch counter Jade Helm operations. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And if you're not with them, cops and military, then you will declare that you're with the Republic now. And don't tell me that I'm a weirdo because I'm upset about this. Tonight, we're going to start the show with some recently released police records that show that the Pentagon sought absolute secrecy during a domestic military training exercise that took place in Minneapolis in August of 2014. This was a follow-up drill uh, to an earlier training exercise that took place there in 2012. Now, these documents also reveal that the Minneapolis city government and the police department collaborated hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the Pentagon on violating Posse Comitatus in order to conduct this counterterrorism training operations inside the city without informing the public. The U.S. Navy sought to keep a low profile with strict security protocols in dealing with the Pentagon, including hand-delivered letters and face-to-face -face planning conversations because of the sensitivity of the training. Training specifics included low visibility movement, low altitude precision helicopter operations, surveillance, and counter surveillance. It was a sight that was hard to miss. Military helicopters buzzing by buildings in downtown Minneapolis and St. Paul. This week, a handful of low flying black helicopters are buzzing just over rooftops and in between buildings. Both Minneapolis and St. Paul police say, you know, they're just assisting in this. They will put out what information they can for the next few days, but uh, only what the Department of Defense really lets them. Minneapolis Mayor Betsy Hodges requested that any advance notice of the military training exercise be limited. In a letter, she respectfully requested that any information pertaining to this training be excluded from automatic public release due to the sensitivities of the training. It's a training mission that has authorities tight-lipped. Their name we know, Night Stalkers, or more formally, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. But what they're training for here in Minnesota is as stealth as their choppers appear. Records on the exercise demonstrate the Pentagon is working to integrate the U.S. military and state and local police departments an effort that strikes at the very heart of Posse Comitatus. Now, InfoWars has reported extensively about the federal government violating Posse Comitatus, working uh, with state and local governments in order to conduct these drills, as well as police agencies. Uh, this is exactly what is happening now with this upcoming Jade Helm exercise, and it's set to happen tomorrow in an upcoming dirty bomb drill that's going to be taking place in Richmond, California. Now, this exercise will include more than 200 soldiers, airmen, local law enforcement, and firefighting personnel who will descend upon the city in order to defuse the situation. Now, this drill is also going to involve the California National Guard's 49th Military Police Brigade, which is home to FEMA Region 9's Homeland Response Force. So not only are we seeing a violation of Posse Comitatus, but also uh, an additional effort for secrecy. So not only are we seeing, once again, violation of Posse Comitatus, but we're also seeing a concerted effort to keep this information away from the public. Now, joining me in studio are our reporters, Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs. Uh, you requested information to cover this event as media. Um, however, you were denied that based on your previous reporting. Talk to me a little bit. What did you find out about this exercise? And then were you surprised with the response you got? Well, I heard about the dirty bomb exercise and I decided to contact the media liaison for the California National Guard to find out about the operation that was going to go on and whether or not they were going to have any kind of media be present there. And then one of our own camera guys here, Josh, said, yeah, I saw an article saying that, hey, if you're media, go to this number, call this captain. So I actually emailed him and called him. I didn't get a response back until uh, it was like four or five hours later and he called me and he goes, yeah, what's your name, your organization? We spoke over two days, you know, by phone, by email, everything's fine. And then last night I get this email and he's saying, due to the nature of our reporting and 
the kind of company we keep, you know, i.e. Alex Jones and being on the show that our, uh, we would not give fair coverage to their exercise. So that's what I thought was very yeah. strange right. is the fact that the Army, the California National Guard, is telling us what is fair coverage. I mean, Yeah, the fair coverage oftentimes constitutes reading out their press release and not asking any questions. Because we've both right. experienced this, Biggs. We, uh, when we went to go see Nancy Pelosi yeah. in South Texas, we called the media liaison. I made the proper arrangements. They said, hey, we'll send you a media packet so you guys can come down here. I said, great. Uh, long story short, they never sent us anything. We go down there anyway. And then they say, you know, we're disrupting the event because we showed up uncredentialed. I said, I talked to the guy yesterday. They refused to give you proper access. So whether you show up, they say you're in violation, or if you try to go through the proper channels and get the media credentials, they just deny you anyway. Right. And so now we're seeing the U.S. military basically saying that they're in control of the fourth estate and they can decide who gets to put out their talking points. Well, I mean, the interesting thing about this entire thing as a guy who wrote me as a captain in the military, in the National Guard, basically the Army, he swore an oath to defend the Constitution. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure somewhere in this Constitution, you know, that seems like an old document apparently nowadays in America, that somewhere in there it says that I have the right of freedom of speech and freedom of the press. To I think out. it's number one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's kind of hard. Uh, I know I there's a lot in there, but you know, maybe <laughs> yeah, number one it, it, it got such read. A, such a big, outdated document, apparently now, yeah. that our own military and people like that mm -hmm. kind of forget what it is. I think that's the biggest joke of this whole thing. This guy stands up for an organization that's supposed to be protecting the country and defending against enemies, both foreign and the domestic, and then taking this oath to the Constitution. And here he is in complete and total blatant violation of just that. Right. And so why are they so afraid of controlling the way that this gets out there? Because they don't want people to be afraid of the fact that the military is going to be working with all these different groups descending upon the city, conducting these drills within the city. And so we saw what happened in Miami when the, the, the military helicopters were shooting rubber bullets down the highway. P they, people didn't know that was a drill. They didn't know they weren't shooting real bullets. People were afraid. And so here you have, uh, you know, a busy uh, city there in California. I mean, so what's the big deal? Why are they trying to make the public think that this is normal? I don't know. I mean, it's just part of their overall psyop. I mean, wouldn't you say so? Yeah, I mean, because it's not just Miami. We've seen it in many other places. They mm -hmm. had the, uh, the zombie apocalypse drill out in California. No, I'm not anticipating a zombie apocalypse. It's just something <laughs> they said to make it more friendly and palatable to the general public, because you got a, guy, a bunch of guys running down the streets with military vehicles, jumping out of helicopters. If you got role players dressed up as zombies, okay, it's more friendly and uh, palatable. So, you know, if they want to have these drills, you know, that's their business. If they feel that they need to do this to uh, combat whatever threat, you know, I'm not sure what city in uh, Afghanistan looks like, Miami, Florida, or mm -hmm. San Diego, California, but if that's the reason why they feel they need to do it, that's fine. But you also have media who want to be there. And like I said, we don't read all the press releases. Case in point, we go to Ferguson, Missouri. They give the press release to CNN. We're not firing tear gas. Well, we knew they were firing tear gas because we got hit with tear gas. And we were right. running for we miles running. with our eyes swollen and the blood vessels yeah. in our eyes. And, and also, uh, they told Fox <laughs> News they didn't target Al Jazeera. They helped them disassemble their equipment, which they did after shooting rubber bullets and tear gas at them. So right. this is why we don't... that bombshell footage of them being yeah, I was, running away. Yeah, and lo and behold, I was standing right there when it happened. But the, the point about this is, this is why you don't go strictly off the press release. Mm -hmm. You go in there and you ask your questions and you get your own footage. So then even if they want to continue to tell the lies like they do in some cases, you have the footage to disprove that. Right. Exactly. They don't want the, the media in there that's going to actually get say what's going down. And now we're being told, since we're asking questions, they're saying, well, these we've been conducting these military drills for decades. This is completely normal. We've always gone out into, it's just that we were in more obscure areas, so people didn't really notice that we were conducting these drills. But now it seems like they are conducting them out in the open, a lot more so, and we're actually seeing them rounding up citizens, like they were in Fort Lauderdale, rounding up dissidents. So is there, am I wrong to think that there's a little bit more going on than Oh, There's definitely normal? a lot more going on, and the, the argument that SOCOM is trying to make, and the people at Fort Bragg with special forces and all that, they do a two-week training called Robin Sage, which is actually held off base, but it's been that way for years and years. Everyone who's grown up in that town, in that area, 
most of those people in surrounding Fort Bragg, Fayetteville, they're all military. So they're all used to the fact of helicopters flying over, artillery rounds going off. There's a two-week exercise that happens six times a year. It's called Robin Sage. It's a culmination of a Green Berets training. So that's the argument they're trying to make is, oh, it's the same thing. Well, no, this is eight weeks of hardcore training outside of a government facility encompassing, what, 10 states now? I right. mean, it's that's massive, not the same thing as operation. your two-week Robin Sage training event, mm -hmm. which is in a very tiny area that's been going on for years. And like I said, everyone in that area is used to all of that. They've been they've grown up with it in that area. But why does everyone else in America have to be exposed to that? And then why do they have to bring that into our backyards? Be exposed we, to them unbeknownst to them. But we, we, we spend so much money, and this is what always pisses me off, we spend so much money on these huge government training facilities, and yet we're not using them. Right. And they're all of a sudden now they're starting to look more and more like, you know, rural America, churches, soccer fields. I mean, why do we need that? Right. Well, and I know that you put out a report a couple weeks ago calling on everyone to go out. You know, you said you were going to put your fatigues on and go and, and confront these guys and see if you could help help them in their mission. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't um, spend four hundred dollars this uh, <laughs> past weekend on brand new uniforms. Mm, interesting. No, so I'm, I know we've got ready. something, I'm geared up. Some, some special reports coming up here. Uh, in the future, but talk to me about this counter Jade Helm operation. All right, so what this counter Jade Helm operation is going to be is a large group of ex special forces, including Navy SEALs, Delta Green Beret, all these guys who are out and awake to what's going on. And the analogy I made earlier today on the Alex Jones show was that Operation Jade Helm is they live. You know, when you're in the military, you're, you're issued a pair of the goggles that you can see everything with. You can read all the BS behind the propaganda when they hand you documents saying that, you know, that they give out to the public. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, if you read it, you're going to go, look, oh, this just looks like a regular training yeah, exercise. But I actually have the goggles, and they didn't take those goggles back from me because those things are embedded in my head now. I can see past that BS, much like all these other spe special ops guys. They're going like, all right, why are we now taking our training from these huge military facilities? Why are we now going and bringing that into the American public so there's this operation that's going to be a counter to Jade Helm where these guys are going to go out to all the cities, to the states, and post up, deploy, and it's nonviolent, not aggressive. They're just going to have cameras. They're going to, they're going to look for the guys because they know what to look for. They've been through the exact same training. They're going to know what these guys are going to be doing, the tactics they use, how they're going to set up, how they're going to blend in, what they're going to do, and they'll know how to tell these guys and call them out, and they're going to send that information. And like we uh, said today on the show, we're going to also have a hotline set up as well for people to call in, give us their information, send us pictures of what they've seen. So I think this is really good to know that, you know, we actually called people out to do something. Mm -hmm. They're organizing, they're ramping up. Yeah, and I don't see any issue with that. You know, if they're standing out of the way, like you said, they're not going to be involved with the guys, they're not going to be uh, harassing the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's for the American people and it's to keep us safe, why wouldn't you want me to be filled with confidence to go and watch? I want to mm -hmm. go see what my American military is doing. I want to see the might of my American military. Can I stand over here with my camera and, and film the operation? Mm -hmm. And I know we've already got uh, Jade Helm at Infowars.com is available. We're already starting to get some information sent to that uh, email address. Uh, some, someone sent us this update that Colorado is no longer going to be involved. They won't be one of the states involved in Jade Helm. It's not because their constituents there said, we're not going to do this. It's just that um, they were told that the military that's there isn't going to be available at that time. So Colorado will no longer be involved. It's kind of bizarre. But here, I mean, no one would have even known that this operation was going on had we not drawn attention to this and said, this is not normal. Well, this is the thing, though. A lot of people are going like, oh, this is going to, you know, start so much chaos and it's going to uh, have a conflict between civilians and the military. No, we actually saved a lot of lives in a sense, I feel, because don't you think being an American citizen, most of us are armed, a lot of us. Especially in Texas. And someone's creeping through your backyard or yep. spying through a tree, you're going to react. And mm -hmm. how do you know that? There's some secret military operation going on. Exactly. That's why we have to shed light on these things, bring this to the attention of the American people so they can be informed and they can be aware of the dates and times, what's going to be happening so people won't be alarmed and make just a normal decision based yeah, off of something. Yeah, protect yourself they, or your family. Yeah, and that's what people forget. That's what these military, you know, bigwigs forget to do is to 
incorporate the civilian population into what's going like, hey guys, this is what's really gonna be going on. If you go, yeah, we might have to steal a car to get from this state to that. I mean, they're gonna be stealing cars. Yeah, they or said doing suspicious petty activity. They, they clearly say we're gonna be doing wrong stuff. Right. If, if you catch me doing something suspicious, what are they gonna do? A cop's gonna pull me over, I'm gonna get citated, arrested, whatever, the same thing. If we see someone doing something wrong, we're gonna call it out. Right. And I, I'm just really glad that these people decided to stand up, get off their butts, not be lazy, and go out and be proactive and help out. Absolutely. And that's the thing that really concerns me is that, you know, like you always say, you would train for the environment that you're going yeah, to be exactly. fighting in. And so if they're just training to go fight, you know, in Afghanistan or Iraq or, you know, some place where the people that live there are expecting military presence. They're expecting a war. It's almost like they're training to fight somewhere that they're going to just do some sort of a surprise attack or be like, you know, somewhere where the citizens of whatever country or nation aren't ready for a military invasion. That's what's frightening to me about this, because why would they be training in rural America? Uh, it's just, it's disappointing when you swear an oath to defend your country. You know, you watch good people die. You know, you almost die yourself. You know, you you just you live in the in the suck is what we called it. You know, where it's just horrible day in and day out. And all you do is you just hope and pray every day that you make it out alive so you can come back home. And to come back home and to find out everything you fought for and your friends died for has just been thrown the hell away because a bunch of politicians and a bunch of pricks at Pentagon mm -hmm. want to go around and just do some corrupt garbage. Right. And we've been really lucky here in this country because we haven't had a military presence. We haven't had constant helicopters in the sky patrolling us and men with guns and things like that it, constantly in our awareness. I know they tried doing that here in Austin several years ago. We were seeing more guys walking around in fatigues with guns just randomly. And we, you know, put a call out for that saying that's crazy. But I feel like they, it is. It's it's something that is trying to acclimate the, po the population, the citizens of this country, to be comfortable with troops on the ground here, a standing army presence. And of course, when martial law, if something like that were to ever happen, it's, it's preparing people for that. But the proof is in the pudding. When you actually get veterans coming out and going, wow, this is something. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. This one, you know, it's not BS. Right. You know, if everyone, if all the, if, if every veteran I knew told me that, hey man, you're crazy, this is not, I'm not getting that feedback from any veteran I know, from the Army, from the Navy, from the Air Force, everywhere. I know people all over the oh, world Oh, well, your stationed. one friend said, oh, it's a psyop. Well, but he, he, but he also admitted there's way more to this operation than we are noticing at this point in time. Wow. So, who knows what that means, but mm -hmm. still though, he wasn't denying it. He was just saying, hey, leave it alone, he's still in. That's the way he's looking at it. I mean, I'm not defending him in any way, but at the same time, these guys are awake to what's going on. If they jump up to this like they are doing now with this counter operation, that lets you know that what we're talking about, the passion we have behind this, the reason that we're looking at this and saying, hey, there's a problem going on, that's how you know it's legit when all these guys are like, and I have a together. lot of faith in our military because mm -hmm. just what you said and also you guys recall the hashtag I didn't join campaign when people said I didn't join the military to go be the Air Force for Al Qaeda. You know, so people are awake to this, you know, maybe they can't be as vocal as they would like to be because they're still in service, but a lot of people are aware of this and they don't really want to go along with it. Right, and we do need good guys on the inside. And that's, uh, you know, Alex mentions that to people all the time. We don't want people pulling out of the police force or the military and this because they're awake. We need those guys on the inside to make sure that the military isn't used to do the bidding of a tyrannical government, you know? Yeah. So that's definitely what we need here. Now, if any of our viewers are there in Richmond, California tomorrow and you get some footage of this training exercise going on, please send it in to jadehelm at infowars.com. Uh, if you want your footage credited, that's great as well. And hopefully we can get it up for the Sunday show and report on it next week. Now, coming up, we've got a special report from John Bowne. You're going to find out that, yeah, we're learning a little bit about this massive intelligence gathering that's been going on uh, against the American people for decades. But actually, it's been going on since the 1940s. And that's coming right up. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, 
and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 what you're not reading about is the government actually abusing these programs and uh, you know, listening in on people's phone calls or inappropriately reading people's emails. If you are the ordinary person and you start seeing a bunch of headlines saying, uh, U.S., Big Brother, looking down on you, collecting telephone records, etc., well, understandably, people would be concerned. I would be, too, if I wasn't uh, inside the government. According to a story appearing in USA Today, the current NSA surveillance of Americans is based on an earlier pre-9-11 program used by the DEA. For over two decades, the DEA and the Justice Department collected logs on every phone call from the United States to over 100 foreign countries. Officials said the operation was related to drug trafficking. The program said to have been discontinued by the Justice Department is described as the first known effort to collect data on the phone calls of Americans in bulk without regard to the Fourth Amendment. The Justice Department described the DEA program as one of the most important and effective federal drug law enforcement initiatives as it went about trying to convince telecoms to turn over phone call records. The drug war, another perfect case point example of problem reaction solution, creating secret police and highly militarized teams to strike out against the American people on a host of political issues, using the drug war as the crisis. The rationale was contained in a previously undisclosed letter sent to Sprint in 1998 by Mary Lee Warren, the head of the department's narcotics and dangerous drugs section. Warren said the operation had been approved at the highest levels of federal law enforcement authority, including then Attorney General Janet Reno and her deputy, Eric Holder. The revelation provides additional evidence that the government is wantonly violating the constitutional rights of American citizens. Recently, secret slides from the NSA surfaced bragging about how they could hack iPhones. And they say, who knew in 1984 that this would be Big Brother and that the zombies would be paying customers? That's right, the people doing this to you see this as Orwellian, yet they identify with Big Brother. They gloat about what they're doing to you, the zombies. You buy a piece of technology that has private personal uses, and they turn it into a tool of surveillance. Uh, when you see everything, you see them on a more frequent basis, and you recognize that some of these things are actually abuses. And when you talk to people about them uh, in a place like this, where this is the, the normal state of business, people tend not to take them very seriously. And, from them, but over time, that awareness of wrongdoing sort of builds up. The programs that have been discussed over the last couple of days in the press uh, are secret in the sense that they're classified, but they're not secret in the sense that uh, when it comes to telephone calls, every member of Congress 
has been briefed on this program. Uh, with respect to all these programs, uh, the relevant intelligence committees are fully briefed on these programs. Uh, these are programs that have been authorized by broad bipartisan majorities repeatedly the since to complain that I didn't know this was happening. We've had many, many uh, meetings that have been both classified and unclassified. Massive intelligence gathering aimed at the American people began at the end of the Second World War with the establishment of the National Security State. The National Security Act of 1947 established the Department of Defense, the National Security Council, and the Central Intelligence Agency. In addition to the U.S. Army working with the country's three major telegraph companies, ITT, World International, RCA Global, and Western Union, to monitor all telegrams moving in and out of the United States, the FBI began a massive surveillance program targeting dissidents and activists considered a threat to the establishment. COINTELPRO also included efforts to destroy the reputations of targeted individuals and other dirty tricks, allegedly also including violence and assassination. We are now entering the NSA back. We're going to go into the military establishment, but we couldn't resist. There's so many signs here saying, do not go in here, essentially, or you'll be arrested. No filming whatsoever. This is complete surveillance state on us, all these cameras, yet we're not allowed to even film with an iPhone. They are staring at us like we're some type of goblins or something. I need to turn the cameras off. Yeah, listen, they're calling in their buddies. They're about to confiscate all of our cameras right now. Well, just keep the uh, live feed rolling. Listen, it's First we're Amendment. Saying, hey, we're saying we're on live feed, First Amendment. We're saying First Amendment. We just want to ask some questions. We're just trying. We're live streaming right now to, on Alex Jones show. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, hey. He got the live feed. These guys love to scare Americans. They love to try to intimidate everybody. They're taking the cameras. They're taking the cameras right now. There you go. National incident. You can't pull up in a parking lot okay. in America. Okay. There you have the NSA people grabbing the camera. At a parking lot on the edge of the base. Live on air right now. We're just live on air. Okay. So they took the cameras, turned off all the stuff, and then we're standing there, and I'm saying, you're not deleting the content. I'm not allowing you to delete the content. We will leave. We will leave. And he's like, no, it's illegal under CFR or whatever. And we called you live on air, and you looked it up. It's not even what it says at all. They have no idea. It's not even the right one you referenced, and he has no idea. So we just kept saying, that's not even true. You're lying to us. You're not telling us the truth. It's, it's completely fake. And he was like, no, it's not. I know the law. I'm a lieutenant of the NSA. He said, are you going to arrest me if I don't give your ID? He's like, maybe. And then he's like, I got a dog. And I'm like, <laughs> it was really <laughs> almost funny. It's really almost funny how pathetic it was. In a study of the NSA, historian Thomas Johnson noted that the agency engaged in widespread wiretapping and watch list operations, and it seemed to understand were disreputable, if not outright illegal and unconstitutional. So what do you guys think about the NSA spying program? Uh, no comment. I have yeah. no comment whatsoever. So are you cool with it, or? I'm kind of indifferent about it. You're indifferent, but it's illegal. Okay. NSA, uh, <laughs> I have no clue. I have no idea about anything that's going on. The National Security Agency is spying on all your telephone calls, your emails, your tweets, your Facebook. Decades before 9-11 and the subsequent Bush order that directed the NSA to eavesdrop on every phone call, email message, and who knows what else going into or out of the United States, U.S. citizens included, they did the same thing with telegrams. And anyone who thinks this is new legal and technological terrain should read up on that program, writes security analyst Bruce Schneier. Louis Tordella, the deputy director of the agency from the late 50s until 1974, told congressional investigator L. Britt Snyder, whatever they did, they did it out of patriotic reasons. They had presumed NSA wanted the tapes to look for foreign intelligence. The USA Today report and the corporate media in general have failed to note that massive government surveillance of the American people predates September 11, 2001, and has been a prominent feature of the national security state since its establishment by President Harry Truman in 1947. The president is trying to take some steps to make the American people more comfortable about what it is we're doing. That's going to be hard. 
because frankly, Bob, some steps to make Americans more comfortable will actually make Americans less safe. Nobody's listening to the content of people's phone calls. This program, by the way, is fully overseen not just by Congress, but by the FISA court, a court specially put together to evaluate classified programs to make sure that the executive branch or government generally is not abusing them and that there it's being carried out consistent with the Constitution. Written by Kurt Nimmo and reported on by John Bound for Infowars.com. That's it for the show tonight. Don't forget to send us in any footage that you get from this upcoming dirty bomb drill in Richmond, California. It's taking place tomorrow. Email that to jadehelm at infowars.com. And we're going to keep that email up and running, of course, throughout the entire Jade Helm 1-5 training exercise. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Don't just make creepy comments on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. And then you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv, where you can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. It's excellent. We will see you here again Monday, 7 p.m. Central. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.